Good morning and welcome to worship from St. Andrew's United Church this morning on this first Sunday of July. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to be welcomed into your homes as we worship together this week. Just a brief announcement this morning that was passed along to us from Reverend Rod Lewis, who is the uh, supply minister at Fairview United Church at this time. Reverend Lewis passed on. Our sympathy goes out to Wayne and Gail Woodford of Fairview United Church upon the recent death of Wayne's sister, Cheryl. Carriage. A private family service was held during this past week. All who grieve Cheryl's passing uh, be supported by the kindness of friends and the comforting presence of God. And so our communal hopes and prayers not only those from Harmony, Fairview, but also St. Andrew's United Church, and anyone who is joining us from near or far, go out to the Woodward and Carriage family this morning. We do recognize that this is the traditional and treaty territories of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples, and it is with thanksgiving that we continue to have the opportunity to live within this place of God's creation and to continue the work of the good news and of hope and transformation in this time and place. Let us worship God. Lift up your eyes to God. Reach out your hands to Jesus. Feel the breath of the Spirit. Let us worship the God who reigns by entering the depths of our humanity. Let us worship God today. I invite you to join in our opening hymn, which is number 218 from Voices United. We praise you, O God, number 218.
And as we've gathered this morning, let us open our hearts, our minds, our very souls to God in prayer and welcome God's presence within our midst and offer those things we need to unburden upon our hearts to God. Let us pray. God of mystery and community, you have called us here this day to remind us of the mission journey you have set before us. Help us to pay attention to the words of Jesus as he sent out his disciples upon a mission of healing and compassion. Remind us that success is not measured in the cures, but in the striving. Enable us to truly be your disciples within this world. Puzzling God, we hear in the gospel message that Jesus was questioned and rejected by his hometown, his friends, relatives, and we wonder how he was able to continue in ministry with such a lack of support. We want to enter our endeavors with full support and acclamation. We are afraid to begin to ask even if our families, friends, and hometown folk belittle it and also us. So rather than face degradation, we back down. Forgive our lack of faith and vision, O God. Empower us to be in service to you even when we do not feel the support of those closest to us. And let us trust in your power and present, presence with us. Heal our hearts and our souls this day and guide our lives and our journeys throughout all our days. For we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And let us share this greeting of peace with our neighbors, those upon our hearts, our minds, anywhere we may think of them this day. Our reading of the good news this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. This is the account of where Jesus goes home and he teaches and he preaches and those closest to him in his hometown. Well, they knock him down a few notches, but it doesn't discourage Jesus for immediately after he sends out his disciples to teach and to heal and to offer compassion in his name. And so let us listen for what the Holy Spirit might be speaking to us in our very present time and place. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. 
And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is he not this carpenter's son? Mary, his mother, brother, James and Joseph, Judas and Simon, are they not his sisters here with us as well? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to him, perhaps, pro, sorry, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. And he called twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. And so they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Here in his wisdom, thanks be to God. You might remember that the 1980s were the king period of television specials. And of course, there were numerous television one-of-a-kind specials that would be planned and come out and they'd be advertised. And some of the most popular were, were famous illusionists or, or magicians, people like Canada's Doug Henning, who, who famously made an elephant disappear upon the stage. Or, of course, probably the most famous of all, the illusionist David Copperfield. For in one television special back in the 1980s, he made a, a Learjet disappear in front of a mass crowd's eyes. Another time, he had a television special of him floating across the, in the air, floating in the air across the Grand Canyon. 
Another television special had him walking through, directly through the Great Wall of China as if he could make matter bend and he could fit between the cracks and spaces. Or of course, one of his most famous, David Copperfield, yes, the amazing David Copperfield, one day made the Statue of Liberty disappear in front of hundreds of thousands of people's eyes gathered, either in boats or on the shore in New York Harbor. And when you're sitting and you're watching these illusionists or these magicians or things happen, you're absolutely amazed and you're left thinking, how do they do that? There's got to be a way. And even though we can't kind of figure it out within our own minds, whether they're using mirrors or, or cameras or smoke or whatever it is, what they do absolutely amazes us because it plays with our sensibilities. And what we know is, is what is real and what is unreal, but right before us is something completely unreal. And whenever you have famous people who become absolutely amazing at something, there is always someone who comes around and wants to knock them down, pull away the curtain to who they are or what they do. Such was the case, because in 1994, Copperfield sued a magician and author by the name of Herbert Becker. And Copperfield sued him in order to prevent publication of Becker's book, which was going to reveal everything. The curtain was going to be pulled back about how Copperfield performed his amazing illusions. This morning in our reading from Mark's Gospel, very familiar, Jesus, while he's finished his time on the boats with the disciples and challenging their unbelief, and he came back to his hometown, he began to teach in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and of course, Jesus was probably not a stranger to many of the people of, of Nazareth. It was like a great homecoming, probably, for this, for this carpenter's son to be able to stand up and, and speak and teach and do the things that he did. And people were probably amazed and astounded at what this individual was able to do and, and the aura and the presence that he brought with him. Not only that, all of the people that followed Jesus into Nazareth, I'm sure it was an economic boom for a couple of days with all of the inns and the hotels and, and people needing sustenance and buying things. Wow, what a great, great opportunity. And still, this Jesus was amazing. They were astounded, we are told. They asked, where did this man get all of this knowledge, all of this power, all of this insight? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done at his hands? Because they're simply amazing. I remember hearing stories um, when we first moved to Brantford in 2010 and of course when we would tell people from across the country we knew, we knew that we were moving to Brantford they were saying oh you're going to Wayne Gretzky's hometown we're like yep yeah, yeah, Brantford is Wayne Gretzky's hometown I think there's nary a person in Canada that does not know that Brantford they may not know where Brantford is but they know that Brantford is Wayne Gretzky's hometown. And of course, much of Canada and the hockey world had such an amazing, amazing, love them or hate them, had an amazing respect for the incredible things and the transforming that Wayne Gretzky did to the game of hockey. Yet was also very well known and not as much talked about is that when Wayne was doing all of these amazing things as a boy and as a young teen, whether here in Brantford or 
having to move to Toronto to play hockey, he was not all that popular in his hometown. We remember that for all of the amazing accomplishments that, that Wayne was able to achieve over his career, all of the amazing and unimaginable things he did as a child, there was a lot of anger and there was a lot of how can we knock this kid off the pedestal within his own hometown? Regardless of all the amazing things that Wayne did, there were those that tried and tried and tried to bring him back to life. Or what we believe the reality of life should be. Wow, was he just the Gretzky boy? We know his brothers and sisters. Did Jesus just not the carpenter? And now I'm not complaining Gretzky to Jesus, but I mean, it's the same type of story. Was he not the carpenter's son? Was his mother not Mary, brother of James and Judas and Simon are not his sisters here in town? They took offense to Jesus because he was something more than what they could comprehend from their hometown. And then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And Jesus was amazed at the reception that he got from people who had known him from his infancy. He was amazed at their unbelief in what he was able to accomplish and do as the very presence of the divine here on earth. Because that's what we generally do, isn't it? We knock people down for the amazing things that they do. We might initially be really intrigued and and see it as something absolutely phenomenal that someone has accomplished or created or has led people towards. But then we start to try and chip away and knock down their achievements. And most often we do that because if it's our own level of discomfort, not only with ourselves, but how can such a regular person do such an amazing thing? If you watch some of the cooking programs, whether it's MasterChef or Hell's Kitchen, there are incredibly talented chefs that compete upon those programs only one winner, but it almost, it's not almost. The reality is, is that these incredibly talented people are knocked down and down and down again for the smallest imperfections in their cooking, even though that if they put a plate of whatever they were cooking in front of us, it would be one of the best meals we'd have in our life. Or think of other programs like uh, The Voice or uh, America or Canada or Britain's Got Talent. People that are willing to go out there and be themselves and be their truly amazing selves and all they get to do is cut down time and time and time again by the so-called professionals. I'm confident that there's been a point in time in your own life where you have felt so good, so empowered. You have been so filled with joy that you had accomplished something that was maybe beyond your imagination or, or it was something that you worked and prided yourself in. Maybe you just got lucky, right place, right time. And those who were close to you during that journey all of a sudden begin to 
change. Behind your back, they become a little bit more critical because of whatever it is that you have cheated. There's some envy or jealousy or longing to have what you have or what you have done. I mean, this is a really common theme within our lives. Anyone who is built up, we cannot wait. And we unfortunately enjoy watching the crumbling and the knocking down. I'm sure God and Christ would be amazed that we would do so. In the same way that Jesus was amazed that even those closest to him within his own town would not open themselves up to the possibility that the divine was in their midst. But when we look at the big picture of life, among the multitude of galaxies, the billions of stars, the hundreds of billions of planets, even within our own solar system, the knowledge of, of the planets and, well, did they have water, didn't they have water, especially Mars? But knowing that life as we understand life could not exist on any of those worlds. Every now and again, I think it's important that we recognize the big picture of how amazing and improbable it is simply to have consciousness and to be alive. Regardless of gender, regardless of orientation, regardless of ethnicity or religion or whether you're atheist or agnostic or just don't care. The improbability of the amazingness of what we take for granted as life. We find so troublesome and complicated and challenging to see the blessedness of how we describe the divine in that creation and in one another. Jesus went on to do all kinds of amazing things. He even amazed some of the most hard-line teachers within the Jewish tradition. But continually, again and again and again, not only through life, not only in his death, but also in his resurrection, though the things astounded and amazed people they continued to try and knock him down. But it doesn't impact the reality of what we know to be amazing within our midst. And the amazing that was born out and lived and breathed among us continues to be born out and lived and breathed in each of us. So yes, like Christ, we might be amazed that people who continue to try and knock the goodness of createdness down. But that which is good and amazing will always rise 
and offer people life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, loving God, for all of the surprises which you spring upon us. You take the unlovely and you cherish them, the mediocre and you make them gifted, the mere nobodies and you ordain them as your apostles. For you entrust us with an authority and ministry far beyond our own comprehension, understanding, and strength. Yet we are reticent. Yet under your patient care, we discover that all things are possible to those who open themselves up to the amazing possibilities of which you offer. And so surprise us again, loving God. Surprise us with the Christ who believes in us and the grace which is made perfect within the challenges that we all face. Today, in particular, O oh God, we pray for those who are suffering in mind, spirit, or soul, and who are in need of not only our prayer, our faith, our witness to our hope in you, but also a sense that they are cared about. For across the western part of our country, oppressive heat has once again been the cause of fires which have destroyed the lives and the communities of people. Amazing people. Amazing people continue to be infected by the COVID virus. Absolutely amazing and incredible people lost their life in in the toppling of a condominium building in Miami. Amazing and absolutely gifted people are stranded in refugee camps around the world, and others are in prison simply because of the amazing and the incredible insight into life that they can offer. We thank you for those that continue to persevere, even though others only look to knock them down. Bless all who are in need this day, O oh God. For we ask all these things through your living and eternal word, Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray to you as our most loving parent, saying, with Mother and Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Our hymn of going forth this morning, number 506 in Voices United, Take My Life and Let It Be, number 506.
It's amazing. With the blink of an eye, and you finally see the light. It's amazing when the moment arrives and you know that you're going to be all right. It's amazing when you're saying a prayer and all you, uh, that you hold dear is there within your heart and within the hearts of others. And so go with the amazing love, peace, and power of the Holy Spirit to be God's amazing people within this creation. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.